All right, let's start off with the eight most obvious ones that you run three of each. It's the Ignite engine. This is a, well, I wouldn't even say an engine. It's more of a deck. It's focused around the Ignites because of the fact that, A, they're all warriors, so easy to get into assault with, and B, they're pendulum scale effects, which they're all normal uh, outside of their pendulum scales, are basically, if you have two in your pendulum scale, you can activate one of their scale effects to pop both to search out any fire warrior, which adds consistency. Pretty much running these 24 monsters guarantees that you'll get into your starter card 90% of the time. The combos you can go into uh, with that one starter card <laughs> lets you end on a board that's fucking nuts. And this, um, these guys are crucial for that, so you want to see two to three in your hand in every game. And uh, running 24 does increase the odds of doing so. We run one of our lovely, lovely friend here, uh, Codebreaker Zero Day. His whole purpose is to work with the Codebreaker engine. You're going to summon him out, link off, bring back, summon, link, and so forth and so on until you end on the board you want to end on. It's a three-card engine that in the right deck can allow you to get into easy rank four options. So he's uh, worth one brick. We run the standard uh, Blue Mountain Butter Spy just because he's a warrior card that can be special summon when you normal summon your starter card. Uh, and it kind of gives an extra extender. He's just for the extender because you know that your opponent's going to try to Valor and Perm your starter card. Having this as a follow-up says, hey, okay, I can still go into my plays from here. Then, we have a small little Goki package. We run three cards, one spell, two monsters. Uh, it's very simple how this whole concept works. A soul gets out Guts, which is level 1. When you link that off, you search out Twist Cobra. Uh, and then you Pendulum Summon Twist, link off, search out the spell, and kind of just go into more plays from there. Uh, you really can run either Guts or Octo Stretch, any of the level 1s that have the when they're sent from the field, they search effect. And Suprex or Twist Cobra are the two, between the two levels outside of the level one you can run. You could run Bear Hug or Rescorpio, but they can be a brick as well, though you can Pendulum Summon them regardless, so technically you have four options that you can replace, or two options for the level one. Uh, so this is just the choices I went with. I like their artwork for Rescorpio, uh, or not Rescorpio, sorry, for Twist Cobra. I like his artwork. And for Guts, if push comes to shove and your play is stopped, while in defense mode, he cannot be destroyed by battle, which is pretty cool, though Octo Stretch can help against OTKs. So they each serve their own purpose, but this is just the ratio I went with. You don't need more than two monsters and a spell, one being a level one, one being uh, three, four, five, or six, and then the spell, which you all know what that is. Then we get onto the starter card, the card that you will see every single game because he is a fire warrior and the Ignites can search him. That is Sublimation Knight. You can go the Neos Alias route, or sorry, Neos Connector route uh, with Aqua Dolphin and all that if you want to. It can help with hand traps and stuff, but of course, the Neos Connector can be easily Valored, Ashed, and so forth. This card can be Valored, but can't be Ashed because he equips a warrior from the deck. And, of course, you're going to choose to equip Squeak Knight. Squeak Knight has the ability that, uh, while it's equipped, it can special summon itself. And if it does, if it's special summon, you can make it a tuner. Never use that effect, because then you can only get one more extra deck summon for the turn. But if you just special summon him, uh, you get two warriors on the field, and it's instant e sold. And that's the whole point. You need to get to e sold. So... This is your one-card starter that you can search out every single game, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and go into your plays from there. Must see. Of course, for our first uh, hand trap at three, uh, it is a 60-card build after all. You're going to run on a couple of hand traps at three. I decided to go with Ash Blossom because, well, it stops a lot of things, and it's really good because of that. And I don't really need to explain why. I think you all know the reasoning. <laughs> then, of course, we got Fire Flint Lady. Uh, the cool part about this card is it actually serves uh, to cover your grounds in a lot of ways. A, 
if you open with Sublimation Knight, the Ignites can't, because you do need two Ignites in your uh, extra deck face up for when you Pendulum Summon. you got to be able to get two Ignites out, as well as uh, Twist Cobra, so you can go into your plays. So if you open with Sublimation Knight, you might think, well, I don't need to destroy my Pendulum Skills to search anything. Yeah, you do, because you need to have two. Uh, Fire Flint Lady is another target you can go for, which is really good. Uh, it is an extender, because if you control a warrior, you can special summon it from your hand. Uh, once per turn. Hard once per turn, might I add. Uh, also, if you open with uh, Goki Guts, or uh, Octo Stretch, if you decide to go that route, uh, you can e-sold this card out, due to the fact that it is level 1, and then use its secondary effect, which allows you to tribute it to special summon Guts or Octo Stretch from your hand, and then continue your plays from then. And then since each effect is a hard once per turn, you can use that effect, then use the special summon effect from a different one, and still go on with your play. So you're not hindered if you open up with Guts, or Octo Stretch, whatever route you go with. Guts in this case, though. For the second hand trap of choice, I decided to go with Effect Whaler. I mean, honestly, you could really go with Ogre, you could go with Nibiru, but I wanted to go with something that would be good going first turn and second turn nine times out of ten. So if I'm going first, it's it's good for on my opponent's turn, but if I'm going second, it's also good to stop them from advancing in their plays. Ogre's good in certain situations, but not always. And Nibiru ain't great once your board's already set up. You don't want to Nibiru the hard work you just put into play. So something like Valor works universally, similar to Ash, and that's why I chose it. And lastly, in Monster Lineup, uh, we all know this card should be banned. I'm not going to deny it ain't. But you're on Union Carrier for this exact reason. Dragon Buster Destruction Sword, you're going to equip it onto a Dark Monster, it'll gain a thousand attack, and your opponent is not allowed to play with the extra deck no more. So not only do you end on a tremendous board of you can't touch me, motherfucker, you also say you can't touch your extra deck either. So, yeah... Sorry. Okay, first off with the spells, as you see in front of you, is Painful Decision. Nine times, or nine out of ten of these spells, pretty much, I mean, okay, not exactly, but pretty much the majority of these spells are designed to get you Ignites to your hand. That is the whole point. You want Ignites. Uh, the more Ignites you have, the more combo you can do. Now, Painful Decision allows you to send a normal monster from, a level 4 lower normal monster from your deck to the grave to add a copy of that monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, kind of like, uh, I guess a normal spell version of, uh, Trap Trick <laughs> for normal monsters. Uh, and, you know, you sending an, uh, one of your Ignites, like Templar or Crusader to the grave to get another copy... Not a big deal. You run three of each. Uh, this is a hard once per turn, so sometimes you may open multiples, which kind of suck, but being able to get to as many Ignites as possible is crucial. Um, it's Rhoda, Reinforcements of the Army. Basically, Painful Decision Part 2, but it also can search out Sublimation Knight or Fire Flint Lady, so do keep that in mind as well. As you see, the third and final card, Goki Rematch. This is what you're going to search off Twist Cobra to allow you to bring back Guts and Twist Cobra, or whichever ones you run, in defense mode, and basically give you an additional two materials, which is kind of what this deck's all about. Extender, extender, extenders. Summoner's Art, same concept as Painful Decision. This lets you add a level 5 or higher normal monster from deck to hand. You run Chevalier, Veteran, uh... Margrave, you name it, you know, and uh, this right here lets you get them from deck to hand to kind of complete your skills or set up for other plays, which is really, really cool. Maybe a 60 card deck, but you really don't want to fuck with hand traps. Okay, Nibiru is really hard to stop in this deck for now. Uh, I forget that extermination card that's coming out uh, eventually. <laughs> It's out in Japan, we just don't have it right now, but when it gets here, I'll probably replace that and edit the hand traps some. But for now, Call by the Grave is the best we got. It does stop Ash and Valor, and that's kind of like the best you can do. So, you need to have something to help counter and guarantee to get your plays off. 
We got technically, I guess, the main two equip spell. Design, Divine Swords, Phoenix Blade. You know what it does. You send it to Great Banish to Warriors. Get it back to your hand. Uh, you can do some nightmare plays with it, etc., etc., etc. It'll actually work better in the next variation of this deck I have, but that requires me getting Verte Anaconda and the whole Dragoon package. Because Dragoon lets you discard to negate something, Divine Sword can really work with that. Uh, but I don't have those yet, and technically Dragoons ain't even out yet. Soon, though. Uh, and then Living Fossil, it's it's a resurrection spell, so it can be an extender or it can be an equip card you send. Either way, it works. And lastly for the main deck, we have three Infernoble Arms Durindal. It's a new card. Squirtle, squirtle, squirtle. Uh, the new card says that uh, you can basically equip it to any monster. And you can add a level 5 or lower Fire Warrior, <coughs> Ignites, Sublimation Knight, or Fire Flint Lady, uh, from your deck to your hand. And if you do, you destroy this card. The rest of the effect don't really fucking matter. Uh, basically, if it's equipped and the monster in it is sent to the grave, you can special summon, I think, a Fire Warrior from your grave. But that effect never really comes up. You're using it as basically another Rota to search out the needed Pendulum pieces or... Fire Flint Lady slash Sublimation Knight. And it is a hard once per turn, but hey, you know what? The more search power, the better. We start off with the extra deck. Uh, I'm going to be honest, you'll go through like 95% of these cards in your first turn. Uh, of course, Abramax is the thing that you will uh, end on sort of-ish. You kind of go through IP Mask Rain on your opponent's turn to go into it so that it can't be targeted or destroyed. For those of you that don't know what Avermax does, it can't be targeted by your opponent's card effects. Uh, your opponent can only attack it, and any special summon monster it battles, it gains that monster's attack during damage step, not once per turn. And if it's sent from the field, or removed from the field, I think, it uh, spins a card uh, back to the deck, or hand, something. It gets rid of a card. <laughs> I'm lazy, I don't feel like reading. But, uh, yeah, this is the card that kind of just makes it so your opponent is not attacking anything but it. For now, we're running one Unchained Abomination. This might be in the future replaced by an Appaloosa, provided I get it. Uh, but, uh, and that's for the Dragoon concept that I will show off down the line in real life if I get the cards. Uh, or if requested enough, I, I might do an update and show it on here. Um, but yeah, so basically put, it allows you to, uh, if a card effect destroys a card on the field besides its own, it can pop a card. If a monster is destroyed in battle, it can pop a card. And during each player's end phase, it can pop a card. So up to, up to three destructions per turn, this just kind of just lets you just clear the field and take out everything. Power Load Ogre. Hmm. Uh, kind of weird. He's the only Goki that is generic. Two plus warriors, not Goki locked, which is a little weird. Uh, basically put, he's going to gain 200 attack times the total link rating on the field, except him, well, on your side of the field, except for himself. So uh, by the time the thing is done, you'll have him probably around 4,600 attack, which is pretty good. Um, he does have an effect, not a quick effect, sadly, where you contribute a Goki link monster, this includes himself, to pop cards on the field equal to that monster's link rating. So you could tribute him on your turn if you desperately need to to pop up to four cards. But that's not the reason you play him. You play him because of his main effect. He's unaffected by everything when he's link summoned. He's ultimate falcon, but at 4,600 attack. Uh, he's a big, beefy bastard that you cannot end perm. You cannot evenly. You can't ghost ogre. You can't veiler. You can't nothing. Lightning Storm, what? What's that again? Yeah, that's what he does. Okay, here we got the Codebreaker Engine. We already got Zero Day in the main. Then you got Codebreaker Virus Swordsman and Codebreaker Virus Berserker. The way this whole combo works is two effect monsters is all that's needed for Swordman. If he's summoned and he's co-linked, usually you want to summon him to an up or down arrow, well, down arrow or up arrow or something, co-link him. He can summon Zero Day from your hand deck or graveyard. Then you're going to link those two into Codebreaker Virus Berserker, co-linking him as well. 
he has more arrows, so figure out how to co-link him, usually up, down, something like that. When he's co-linked, he can special summon from the grave codebreaker monsters up to the number of extra link zones you control. So if you summon him, say, to a link three, you could then summon back Swordman and uh, Zero Day, and then be able to go into more plays. Usually you'll link Swordman after getting all three back with uh, Berserker's effect. You'll link Swordman with Berserker to go into Power Load Ogre, because they're both warriors. And then you'll have Zero Day sitting there that can be used for another link material. This is all to help get you a free Power Load Ogre on the field, which, uh, you know, unaffected by everything again. Honestly, for the most part, its effect don't matter. I mean, I guess push comes to shove. He does have the effect he can't be destroyed by effect monsters in battle. So, okay. Uh, the rest of his effects don't really matter, though. Uh, honestly, none of his effects matter. You run Draco Master of the Tinny because he has three arrows down, and he's generic to go into just requiring a link monster. You're going to go... Uh, this is your way to get, um, we'll say, for me, Guts' effect off. He sold with Guts makes him, you get the search for Twist Cobra, and then you're able to Pendulum Summon out, because you have three zones to work with. Um, and that's and also three arrows, so that you can uh, do the whole, uh, you know, uh, Codebreaker aspect if need be and all that. Um, you really just want him for his zones, his effects don't matter, so if you find another Link 3 that has three arrows down and you can go into him, you can use that one just the same. It doesn't matter on the effect. Uh, you run him just on rare situations. You need to get rid of something. You do got design, Divine Sword Phoenix Blade to discard. You can co-link him rather easily. So spinning a card, discarding Divine Sword, uh, and getting to draw a card, and then re-get back Divine Sword if you want. It's not horrible. Uh, just in case your opponent has a spare back row, yet again, co-link, draw a card, pop a back row. It's the same thing as with Unicorn. Uh, and, you know, this, this whole combo just works that way because, uh, sometimes you need a little extra. But, he actually does serve a little extra of a perk. Um, if you co-link him with Avermax, you are able to prevent Avermax from being pretty much taken out at all. Because he can't be destroyed by battle while co-linked with Phoenix. And he wouldn't be able to be destroyed by effects or targeting, thanks to IP and his own effects. And they can't attack Phoenix because Avermax says no, so more options. The only extra deck monster you run two of, and this is because you have to get this off, it's crucial. Now, one thing you'll notice with the soul, when a soul is Link summoned, you can add a warrior from your deck to your hand, but you can't summon or use its effects this turn. See, the thing is, that only goes for monster effects. If you were to, say, add an Ignite Pendulum monster, you can set it in your scale. You may not be able to summon it, but you can activate its Pendulum effect to destroy itself. So, Isolde's actual summon effect is useful here. You have 24 targets that you can search out to finish your scale. So, if after you do your plays, you have one scale in hand, well, you just search out the remaining uh, scale you need and... Boom! You're in game. And then, of course, it's standard special summon effect. You're going to send one equip spell to summon Guts or Fire Flint Lady if you have Guts in hand. And then, you know, kind of go from there. Nightmare Cerberus is kind of the same as Phoenix. You're going to co-link it, draw a card, and if your opponent just happens to have a special summon monster you can't get over, it's there. For right now, this is just in here because I had Boral Sword at one point, but I never had a way of going into it. Honestly, this card can be replaced, but for now, he's here just in case. Uh-oh. The card everybody hates. It's Union Carrier! Union Carrier's gonna target uh, Abomination and uh, equip that Destruction Sword. So, Abomination goes to 4,000, and you can't summon from your extra deck. That's his only purpose, really. And you might think, well, okay, you're going to summon Union Carrier and leave a weak-ass monster on the field. Well, the next card helps take care of that problem at the start of your opponent's main phase, right after they play their first card. Provided it ain't droplets, uh, you know, evenly, or uh, whatever. Uh, you know, cards like that. Uh, I forget the damn other card that uh, mass negates, but you know the one I'm talking about. 
Uh, uh, Dark Roller no more. There you go. And this is the MVP. You're going to go into this at the same time you go into Carrier. So uh, the second your opponent plays a card, you quick effect with IP Mascarena, which you can do, to Link Summon on your opponent's turn. See, Union Carrier can't be Link Summon the turn it's summoned. But on your opponent's turn, that's no longer the turn it was summoned. So you can Link into Avermax using IP and Union Carrier to make... Uh, to make that unstoppable card. And since IP also grants Avermax with the ability he can't be destroyed by card effects, it's a win-win. You also, for record, can uh, IP with Verte Anaconda on your opponent's turn for Avermax. Should you have summoned Verte to summon Dragoon? Just stating. Link Spider's kind of crucial. See, usually the way you're going to go is you're going to Pendulum Summon out two Ignites and Twist Cobra and one of the Ignites and Monk, or Draco Master, will be used to make Abomination. You'll have one Ignite and a Goki on the field. You can't really do anything, so you link off the Ignite for Link Spider and then use Link Spider and Tr Twist Cobra for the Codebreaker combo because it requires two effect monsters. So, he's actually useful. To round it off, we got ourselves a Link Karibo. Um, honestly put, just like Cerberus, this is just in here because I don't know what else to put. When I switch to the other version, this will probably come out for Dragoons, while Union Carrier comes out for Verte. Uh, but, yeah, that's that's all this is. It's in here because it can be. Uh, you do got Guts and you got Fire Front Lady, so you have targets for it. I guess if you have enough extenders, you can go for a Link Karibo along with the others, but it very rarely happens. Alright, this one is very simple. <laughs> space was tight. I would recommend running three Nibiru's, but I didn't have the space for it, so two will have to do. This is when you know you're going second, and you need to stop your opponent from getting plays. Remember, your whole engine can be started with just a couple of Ignites to get into Sublimation Knight. But if your opponent builds up a board that's negate, 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 you're not gonna get any of those plays. So running two Nibiru's help you break that. <laughs> of course you're running the Psyframe package. I mean, why wouldn't you? Uh, cool part is, is you can actually Pendulum Summon out Driver should you happen to draw into them, but Gamma and Driver uh, just kind of allow you. I'm always worried that when you play the two Scales and you go to pop them, they ask you right there. Uh, you need to get your Sublimation to your hand, A, and then on your opponent's turn, you know, they're just, if they're going first, they're just making all sorts of boards. Fuck that shit. Negate. Destroy. Uh, granted, I, I really wish that this deck had a way to re-get back Driver so Gamma could be used later, but once you get your big guys on the field, it don't really fucking matter. Again, you're going second. Yeah. <laughs> If you can build your big board, you may not be able to OTK then, but you could take away all your opponent's resources to where they're not going to do much, especially with Abomination, attack, pop, attack, pop, even if you're not doing damage. If you take away all their stuff, come next turn, they're not going to have many resources left to come back at you. But if they have a million negates, you're not going to get your plays off, so stopping their negates by just giving up battle damage that turn, fine with me. Yeah, you got Twin Twister. I mean, what else? Back row heavy decks. They're an asshole. You, like I said, you can get off with very few cards, so discarding one card to pop two back row, yeah, that's fine. It's, it's just fine. I'd rather not walk into something that could totally fuck me over. So, Twin Twisters for days. Same concept as Dark Ruler. You, you give up the battle phase more so in this one, though. And, and kind of works the same as Twin Twister. It's meant for back row. You're going to take away all their good resources so that when you go for your plays, they have little to no counters to you because you don't want to walk into a trap and have your whole entire combo stuffed. I mean, you already got to worry about Nibiru and hand traps. I'm not worrying about back row as well. So fuck that shit. Goodbye. Well, that's my deck. I hope you like it. If so, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. And if you'd like to see the, uh, you know, Dragoon version of it, let me know below and I'll show it if I get enough replies. Uh, as always, please be safe in the COVID world and until next time, peace out, rock on.